Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Bonaventure, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. And our intention today is for Aura di Nagero, the deceased, coming together as God's family. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that just as we celebrate the heavenly birthday of the Bishop St. Bonaventure, we may benefit from his great learning and constantly imitate the ardor of his charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Woe to Assyria, my rod and anger, my staff and wrath. Against an impious nation I send him, and against a people under my wrath I order him to seize plunder, carry off boot, and tread them down like the mud on the streets. But this is not what he intends, nor does he have in his mind. Rather, it is in his heart to destroy, to make an end of nations, not a few. For he says, by my own power I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am shrewd. I have moved the boundaries of the people, their treasures I have pillaged, and like a giant I have put down the enthroned. My hand has seized like a nest the riches of the nations, as one takes eggs left alone, so I took in all the earth. No one fluttered a wing or opened a mouth or chirped. Will the axe boast against him who hews with it? Will the saw exalt itself above him who wields it? If a rod could sway him who lifts it, or a staff him who is not wood, therefore the Lord, the, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will send among his fat ones leanness, and instead of his glory there will be kindling like the, fire of a, like the kindling of a fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, the Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people. Your people, O Lord, they trample down. Your inheritance they affect. Widow and stranger they slay. The fatherless they murder. The Lord will not abandon his people. And they say the Lord sees not. The God of Jacob perceives not. Understand, you senseless ones among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? The Lord will not abandon his people. Shall he who shaped the ear not hear, or he who formed the eye not see? Shall he who instructs nations not chastise, he who teaches men knowledge? The Lord will not abandon his people. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. But judgment shall again be with justice, and all the upright of heart shall follow it. The Lord will not abandon his people. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. 
You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. For no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone who, whom the Son, the Son wishes to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, <clears throat> today in the gospel, we have come to learn three points. What Jesus is telling us that to know his father is to know him, and to know him is to know his father. He's telling us that knowing his father will know through his deeds and his relationship with us. God sent us his beloved son as the very liberation himself. He wants to be known and loved by us. Jesus Christ is the window through which our human hearts can know God. Christ's very identity derived from his being from God. The more we go to Jesus, and the more we look to him and learn from him and speak with him, listen to his words, the more we'll be discovering God the Father and how much he loves us. Jesus always turns the Father expressing praise, oh, and thanksgiving. How much we can discover God's love by turning our hearts and words in gratitude to him for all he gives and does for us. One day, when I was in Cincinnati, Ohio, I was invited to go and give anointing of the sick with a girl with uh, 16 years, and she was suffering with cancer. And for a long time, she has been in the hospital. And when I went there and I started praying with her, after anointing her, giving the Holy Communion, she said, Father, I'm ready to go and stay with Jesus. So I was so moved. This young teenager, 16 years, she knows Jesus. She knows Jesus not only by, by words, but she knows Jesus by heart, even by her way of life. Today, also in the gospel, we hear that simplicity of heart is the gift God has given us. Our hearts yearn to enter into this intimate relationship with God, the Father and Son. Yet, the more we try to figure out, understand, or grasp, in the more elusive it can seem. There is only one condition needed to experience, know and accept this knowledge of God. It is revealed to us by way of encountering it, not as an intellectual exercise or the result of achievement, but by becoming childlike, being simple, Jesus teaches us that intimacy with God requires letting go of any self-sufficiency. A child heart believes what the Father says is true, trusts in his promises, and knows what he has asked us to do is for our good. The more we put our trust in God, and not in ourselves, the more we will encounter him 
and experience his love. As I have said for this young teenager, trust in God. Jesus knows who he is and from whom he has received what has been entrusted to him. His confidence is the assured knowledge of his father's love. We are about to begin another day's work. It can be tedious and we are of some to set out on our own. Having a good friend in Jesus at our side considerably lightens the Lord. Whatever burden, self-sufficiency, or challenge lay ahead, we know Jesus Christ wants to bear them with us. We are not alone. He is there to shoulder every joy and sorrow. He reminds us to keep turning our Father, whose love provides and takes care of all we need. We need Jesus, and Jesus is telling us, come to me who you are labor and burden, and I will give you rest. Let us open our hearts and listen. From the inner heart, he always transforms our lives. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am also with you. Amen. Please stand. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. Give us courage always to open our heart and listen from the heart. And for this, we pray. Through the intercession prayers of St. Bonaventure, give us courage always to love one another. And for this, we pray. For the needs of our country and for the leadership, Give us strength always to recognize that you are always taking care of us. And for this, we pray. For our struggles, and especially for this time of the pandemic, we pray for all first responders, for what they are doing it, and for what they are continuing to save us, and give them courage always to put their trust in you. And for this, we pray. For our church, and for the needs of our community. We know that we cannot be successful unless we come closer to you. Give us courage always to know that we are family, and for this we pray. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar in the first day of Blessed St. Bonaventure that bestowing on, on us your pardon, our obli ob obli oblations may give honor to your name 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is true of right and just to our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Bonaventure, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy church, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are claimed. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and Light, blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and proclaim it. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to that who have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Mary our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Aura Tinajero, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Be with your spirit. Let us offer now each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I think all of us may never know how to, how to do this, but just in case, um, please. Let the usher bring you forward one at a time and, and distance. Come up and cup your hands, have the Eucharist dropped into your hand. Move to the side to one of the yellow dots. Lower your mask, receive the Eucharist. Pull your mask up, return to your seat.
Please stand. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord finds awake when he comes and knocks at the gate. Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of blessed Bonaventure, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Deacon Tom, I want to thank you for your prayers and for your participation. And for those who are watching live streaming mass, I say also thank you for your prayers and for your participation. But I want to ask you to continue to pray for those who have asked us to pray for those who are sick, maybe in their homes or in their community, even for those who are in the hospitals. Have a wonderful day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.